entrepreneurs on born that brew. You are now listening to the Entrepreneur Podcast with your host, Adam McChesney. Let's grow! Welcome to the Entrepreneur Podcast. I am your host, Adam McChesney, and I want to thank you for being here. We are live from Half Coast Studios here in St. Louis, Missouri. Thank you, as always, to Half Coast for this amazing setup and sponsoring the show. If you are looking to start your podcast or take your current one to the next level, then you need to check these guys out. Contact them today for a free consultation. If you're listening, please be sure to subscribe to the show and leave us a five-star review on Apple and Spotify. We would love for you to share this on social media by tagging me, and this way we can get this incredible content out to more people. You are in for a treat with today's episode. This guest is truly one of a kind and someone that I highly respect. He operates with a give first mentality and is always providing insane amounts of value to his network. We got connected through a program called Apex and have a similar story of how we took our leap and path into entrepreneurship. So I'm really excited to have him on and learn even more about the guest today. My guest is Kyle Reed. He is the owner of Timberland Marketing. Timberland Marketing is a boutique marketing agency providing custom solutions to your business to drive scaling. They offer organic and paid marketing techniques, and we're going to dive into some of that here in a bit. But Kyle, welcome to the show. Man, I appreciate you for having me on, Adam. Yeah, I'm excited and uh, really excited to dig into your entrepreneur story and learn more about yourself. But I first also wanted to kind of thank my wife put together some amazing growlers with our podcast logo on here. We had just been kind of running with your whatever beer cans I could find in my house. So uh, kudos to Delaney for doing this because it looks, it looks a lot better. So you're the first guest that gets this, uh, this nice new uh, setup here. So, <laughs> but uh, that's awesome. It's but, awesome. But yeah, Kyle, man, thanks for having me on. Uh, if you want to kind of give a quick background just on uh, what Timberland, Timberland Marketing does, we'll kind of get into your story here in a little bit, but just let the audience know uh, what Timberland Marketing does. Yeah, man. So, um, what we actually focus on is more, if you will, on that organic side of marketing, of course, and then tapping into that paid strategy as well. And uh, so where we actually focus our direct effort, uh, when we bring on all of our clients is making sure that they have a reputation and referral management system embedded into their marketing strategy. You know, the reason being on that, and we can get into depth on that moment, but the reason being is because I need my clients before I want to start driving any kind of traffic to their business in any other format. I want them to be able to have a base of reputation on across the internet. Right. And so I don't, I don't want them to be an unsearchable entity or an entity that's just like, uh, who are these guys? And so I need them to have realistically a reputation management referral management system. And the next thing that I do is realistically build them in automation systems. And that's done, of course, you know, you and I are very familiar with them, but for the audience who may or may not done through a couple different CRM systems where we embed top of mind awareness touch point systems into their strategy, largely done via email and text message to where we're actually building that awareness for business. And then outside of that, once we get those strategies in place, then we start to look at that paid strategy route as well. But I want to get all the organic footprint long before I start having a client spend money on ads. That's awesome, man. Yeah. And I love your your thought process behind that, because a lot of people, you know, are just like, Hey, go into paid advertising and there's no foundation. There's no, as you said, footprint for that company, for people to do research for that reputation to already be there. So I really like the fact that you kind of start there and we'll dive into some more of that here um, in a second, obviously about your business and, and yourself as an entrepreneur, but for the audience, if this is your first time listening or you're just getting a recap, we have a unique twist on how we do this podcast. We want to compare the entrepreneurial journey to that of the brewing process. So we call it, obviously, our entrepreneur process. And we start with the history. So the history of this entrepreneur, um, Kyle, obviously joining us today, every beer has a reason behind why it is getting brewed. Obviously, we know what your company does, but tell us who you are, where you come from, and then obviously, you know, get in a little bit depth on a little bit further on who your ideal client is and who you're working with. 
Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, so actually, matter of fact, what I'm doing now is an entirely unrelated to what my background growing up and what any kind of degrees that I have are related to. So I grew up in Southeast Colorado on a farm in the middle of absolute nowhere, uh, a relatively large farm and got to, you know, experience business in a realm of, if you will, maybe not, no, not so much business ownership, but more like, you know, my dad and my grandpa were the ones running the operation while we still had employees and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, doing a lot of distribution of product across the country. Then that being said, then I went to uh, college in Golden, Colorado for at a, at a college called Colorado School of Mines, got me what's called a metallurgical engineering degree. And for a majority of the folks, even this to th this day, when I tell them that, they don't know what that is. And that's because it's a very small uh, niche engineering degree. Ultimately, what it is, it's an engineering degree with a steel background. And so um, now I live in Little Rock, Arkansas. And so, you know, I, I went from Colorado to Arkansas, actually to a small town in northeast Arkansas, just south of St. Louis, at about three hours. And so went to work for a steel company down there. As an engineer, made my way into supervisor leadership management positions at a pretty young age. He started there at 22. I left that position and said so I started in May of 2014, left in September of 2020. So about six years and a few months, if you will. And uh, it, it wasn't really, you know, in that capacity, it wasn't really a scenario that there was like a corporate world that I didn't enjoy or anything of that nature. My wife and I at the time were wanting to get to a larger area. And so we relocated down here to Little Rock. And at that time, that September timeframe of 2020, I did two things. I started a new job in an entirely new industry that I had zero experience in, which was the commercial construction industry. So again, and I did that as a project manager, but, in, and then at the same time, I started a side hustle which in, in all reality, I had been building some sales funnels, just dabbling in that, if you will. And then I was like, all right, I'm going to, I've been selling these. I should probably form an LLC that way, you know, whatever tax implications might hit me, at least I may be protected. You know, that was my very uh, uneducated business brain at the time. And then, uh, so that was September, 2020. As I progressed through the end of 2020 into 2021, you know, I was gaining a lot of experience with the project management role, with the commercial construction role, and building a lot of reputation there. But then I also joined the Apex organization that you and I are part of right at the end of 2020. And that really helped me get a, a jump start to my marketing business at the time, just start getting traction, understanding, you know, a lot of different things that it was that I could actually improve on, whether it be how I was delivering services, how I was selling services, or even how I was fulfilling services and what systems I was using and all of that. And it got to a point where that this was kind of a two-sided thing. The culture was something at the, at my nine to five or my corporate position there was not something that I really aligned with well. And then also at the same time, I'd come, cause I lived about three miles from the office. So I'd come home on my lunch break and I'd be taking sales calls and then I'd come home at night and I'd be taking sales calls and on the weekends, you know, sales calls, fulfilling uh, work that I was selling and all that kind of stuff. And I got to a point where the, the overlap of that not being so fitting of the culture. And then also I didn't feel I was really doing them a service, uh, realistically doing them a disservice by being not mentally attached to it by the fact that, you know, while I was at the office, people were texting me like, Hey, can we get on a call, you know, tonight? Or, Hey, can we get on a call right now? And all that kind of stuff. And so ultimately that led me to making the decision to essentially uh, leave corporate in July, 2021 and go all in on me. It was right at the end of July, 2021. So as we're recording March of 22, you know, it hasn't even been a full year that I've been completely self-employed by myself, but uh, a lot of growth has happened since then. Obviously, it's one of those probably very similar stories that everybody has. You jump off the cliff and you build the plane on the way down. Uh, you know, I think I got to a point where I was, I built the plane on the way down. It was starting to go back up and then it ran out of gas for a second. So I hit the ground and then I had to rebuild, gain some more momentum. And, and obviously at this point, that plane is back flying, if you will, if you use that mentality. And so, yeah, so that's kind of, 
if you will, who it is that I am, kind of where I come from, and a little bit of my background. But as far as, you know, kind of digging a little deeper into what I do, as far as with the business, yeah, like I said, you know, we simply actually help people my offer, if you will, like I've really refined my offer. I think all of us in business have to define and refine our offer. And mine has been very simply here after I've got it dialed in, I help businesses drive reviews to their business. That way they can be known as an authority online. And then I turn around and build them automation systems to help them step up onto their business rather than being so much in their business. That's amazing, man. I, you know, I knew a little bit about you know, your journey, obviously going full time, but I didn't know the whole detail of your yeah. degree. I knew it was, I knew it was in engineering, but that that's awesome, man. And just your, your transition from, you know, moving then a year later, obviously being at that job, taking an exit and betting on yep. yourself. I know obviously like that's a, you know, doing that a year prior, that is, one of the hardest things to do is to leave that, that comfort zone, if you will, and really bet on yourself, which you've done a phenomenal job. And you, you did a great job of obviously providing value and doing the work along the way. Whereas most people, when they take the leap, they, they don't really have a foundation. You at least were doing things on, on your lunch break and yeah. at night and on the weekends, which I think that most people don't talk about. Those are the things that you have to do in order to to make it happen, which is amazing, man. Um, and then, you know, kind of the next step of the entrepreneur process as we transition, talking about the ingredients within a beer, what are three things that within your process have made you successful as an entrepreneur thus far? Yeah, you know, within the process, and this actually goes back to even just being not only in the process, but just as a whole, as a human um, the biggest three things for me is intentionality and then consistency and actually being willing to listen to people who have gone through the struggle before me. Then that way I know what it is that they've gone through so I can, you know, learn to either do or not do what they've done. And so, yeah, that is because, you know, I even think about consistency. One of my core values is consistency, but the biggest thing that I had with that at first is I was consistently doing really kind of just shotgun approach. And so when I got that intentionality dialed in, then at that point, it, it really made a switch for me. And then of course, you know, listening to people who have done it in the past, whatever it is, uh, whether it be, you know, building a marketing business, building a business, or, you know, just networking in general, there are so many different things, just listening to these folks. That was huge for me, has been huge for me. No, that's awesome, man. Yeah, I, I love how you, you talked about you were consistent, but at the same point, you felt like there was kind of that shotgun approach. And I think everyone has that, has that feeling when they're just getting started. And I still, I mean, everyone still has it to a degree and and how you can fine tune that in order to make it to where it's not that is obviously of the utmost importance, which is great, man. Talking about, you know, the next step of the brewing process, obviously great beer doesn't happen overnight. Walk us through some of the ups and downs of your journey. Obviously, I know, you know, it has been, uh, you know, not years at this point, but you still have uh, a ton of experience. You still have a ton of ups and downs and stories. Fill us in on that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there's, there's a couple things that come to mind on that. So I took the, uh, I took the leap at the end of July. Right. And by no means, you know, sometimes when you hear folks giving advice on it, when you, when to take the leaps, folks are like, okay, do it when your side hustle has completely replaced your main hustle income. Well, I'll be totally transparent with you. I didn't wait that long. And I was at a spot where I was about maybe, if you will, about 20 to 25% of the way. And, but I knew for me, I needed to pin myself into the position of there was no other option. And now I will say this, I did, I I set myself up very well in corporate and uh, I was smart with my money and all that kind of stuff. So it wasn't like, 
if I didn't take a paycheck for, you know, six months and I'll get into that in a second. Um, I, I wasn't going to all of a sudden be homeless and not eating, but, uh, and so with that, actually on that notion, you know, these are the kinds of things I didn't know about taxes. And so I would say, this is kind of like one of the, the downs, if you will, for, so I left at the end of July. So that gives me five months, August through the end of the year. And I paid myself $3,500 in that time frame out of the business. And then, and obviously we all know that $3,500 does not go very far in a month's time frame, let alone five months. And so, you know, kind of rebounding from that as I come into 2022, you know, being able to, for one, pay myself like a bonus, if you will, from the efforts of last year, and then start to, you know, make those connections with say tax professionals, CPAs and all that. That I would say it, it may not be perceived as kind of a down, but uh, it, or an up. But I would say realistically for me, that was an up and a down, right? Like I, I literally didn't drain my bank account, but I got into a spot where you know I was dwindling it just a little bit every month, being as super cautious as possible, not spending money on things that I didn't need to, and all that. And so that's one of them. But I'll tell you another one. Um, I had a scenario very quick right out of the gate. Um, it was actually October. I went from, you know, uh, a few thousand a month to in multi multi five figure months, very quick. And the growth that happened with that is actually almost like a, honestly, kind of like a scary growth. And it got to a point where when, when I, when that happened, it was almost like so much work came to me. I had to realize I had to basically kind of restructure how I was operating my day and all that kind of stuff. Because realistically what happened is I was falling short on the offering and the fulfillment of what was actually needing to go to the client. And so not only that, I had scaled back my efforts in my own market. And so, and, and like you and I were talking on before the show, you know, that actually led into the beginning of this year where my, my lead flow and all of that, it seriously suffered from it. And so, you know, I went from just a few thousand a month to multi five figures a month back down to, you know, just high four figures, if you will. And I was like, holy crap, this is uh, this is not cool. But then, you know, I was like, all right, now I need to figure out, I understood what it was that went wrong. I understood how I got myself into that position. And that was, you know, for one, taking on a whole lot more than I realistically needed to at the time. And then also, um, now let me say this, I, we were able to get everything fulfilled. It just took longer than I expected it to. But then on the other side, you know, taking that and really defining my offer and getting my clients started on one thing, define and, and really refine that process for them and then move into the next one for them. And so I've kind of created a model where I start them on low ticket and upsell them into the things to where what we start at the beginning pays for the next investment, pays for the next investment and all that. And so, you know, those are some of the biggest ups and downs that I had. And they taught me a whole lot of valuable lessons. That's for damn sure. Dude. That, that's a that's a lot that's a, in in a short period yeah. of time, and that that's awesome yeah. that you had all of those and that you you've taken those ups and the downs and you've taken the lessons and clearly you've acted on them. Um, you know, I was the same way in certain instances. Like I I learned a lot early on too. It's funny that you talk about the tax side of things and not paying yourself. I had kind of the <laughs> same thing going on where I was like, hey. I basically had a year's worth of like, okay, I could probably not make a dime for a year, but I went six yep. months without paying myself. Um, basically yep. the rest of 2020, I, I didn't. And then I realized like, dude, there's so many things about taxes, about business that you have no idea that now if I were to start from ground zero, I'd have all this experience to know like, <laughs> you need to prepare, you need to have, you know, yeah. a good accountant, all of those different things. Um, but I, I love what you talked about as well as your mindset of when that happened, when you started at, you know, the four figure months and then you jumped up and then you realized, hey, I might need to figure out some things for this to really continue that way um, and focus on the fulfillment, focus on your processes, your lead nurturing system for your own business and things like that. I think those things that, that probably initially set you back Please. again are going to be what propels you to move forward. So I really like about how you at least 
caught yourself there and understood what that was and, and what it will do for you moving forward, which is amazing. Um, so the fourth step of our process here at Entrebrewer, we have the fermentation and conditioning. So um, this is the process within the brewing uh, where you see what the final result of that beer is, what it tastes like, and figure out what needs to change in order to get better. So what is one lesson that you have learned that you would share with someone that's an entrepreneur entrepreneur that would save them years worth of mistakes? Man, I, I realistically, I'm going to tie that back, <clears throat> excuse me, to the lesson just a moment ago and, and put a, not a spin on it, but just a different way to talk about it. When you bring on a client, it's your job to represent them and what it is that you're actually selling them for. And I knew that, right. But my, in the very beginning, I was like, okay, I've got to, I got to bring in clients so I can pay bills or so I can build up a, uh, a cash flow to where when I start paying myself, I can pay bills and all that. And that's what, in a way, you know, kind of got me into the position that I got into. And so, yeah, realizing that, in a, in a way, when you bring a client on, you're literally representing what it is that they need you to actually fulfill for that. And uh, I mean, there's, for me, there's not much more to expand on that part. No, that's, that's, a, that's a simple and straightforward lesson. And I, it, uh, it's often overlooked though, right? Because there's so yeah. many other things that you can take as far as lessons or things that you focus on. But but that's why you've been so successful in not just the business side of things, but then also your networking and self-development is because you focus on the things that actually matter, which is super important. Um, talking about, you know, the distribution. So the last and final step here. So that's obviously taking the beer to market and selling it. What is next for you? What's next for Kyle Reed? Yeah, man. So there's, there's a couple things that are, you know, on my mind, right? There, I, I could talk about this in a business and in a personal sense, as far as business goes. Uh, so right now, you know, still in growth and accumulation mode. And I, I would say that that growth and accumulation mode never stops, but you know, still hell, I'm not even in a way other than having this as a side hustle while I had a corporate structure being all that all in on it, a hundred percent and not fulfilling time in other capacities. I'm realistically in at about eight to nine months right now. So I'm not even a year in. And so with that being said, the, you know, the biggest thing with what's next for me kind of ties back to a couple of points that we've talked about. Really, I dialed, I've dialed in my offer. I've dialed in uh, the approach that it is that I bring clients in, you know, stair-stepping them or elevating them to the top of, for one, my services, but also to the top of what it is that they need. And then, then so I've dialed that in. And now, at this point, onboarding a couple of more clients, if you will, to then bring on essentially a team. That's, that's where my biggest step is that I'm doing and focusing on next is really bringing on that team. And so like, for example, when I was in corporate, especially in the steel mill and in my management leadership positions, I had a lot of experience with SOPs, building teams uh, at one time, you know, had a people, a team of over a hundred underneath that uh, leadership. And so, I mean, I've got that experience with SOPs and all that. And so, but it's a whole different animal when you take it and you do it on your own hundred percent, even though I was like, all right, I, I've got the experience over here. That'll be a breeze over here. That's not the case. And so that being said, the biggest thing that I'm focused on right now is implementing those systems to help uh, bring on a team and, you know, help them, you know, understand the, the fulfillment process to where my team that I develop and build can then take over the fulfillment process. And then I can go out and really be more of that salesperson. And then, and then at that point, obviously rinse and repeat for other required positions. And so in the business, that's essentially like biggest of what's next. Now, like for, you know, on the personal side of things, Chelsea, my wife, she just finished up a nurse practitioner school a couple of months ago and kind of getting all their licensing and everything in that uh, regard in place. And uh, there's, there's some potential for us to do a little bit of traveling and uh, start, you know, seeing some other places of the country, maybe go spend some places, spend time in other places of the country as well. And so I think what we're going to be doing is a little bit of mobile, not, you know, living out of a van or a, an RV, but it's something where it, it's kind of like a, a between a, a short-term rental and a long-term rental, something like that. 
and go see some other places. And, you know, because we, it's just us and two dogs at the moment. We don't have any kids and I figured, well, why not now? Dude, that's awesome, man. I, I'm excited for you, uh, on both fronts. I mean, that's amazing that it's, it's awesome, right? Like year two years ago, like even myself, I would never ever be able to envision being able to go and work remotely and do all this stuff. And, and you're getting the opportunity to do that while you guys can, which is awesome. And then on the flip side of that, you know, getting yourself to the point where you're working solely on the business with a little bit in the business and building out your team, that is, that's the most fun you will ever have. I never thought it would be fun. And as I'm, you know, a couple months into doing it, it's really cool to see the other side of it and not just have the business rely solely around you. And I have no, no doubt in my mind that, that you're going to get there here very soon and be able to really go where you guys want to go and enjoy life. So I'm, I'm pumped for you, man. And I really do appreciate that. Yeah. You know, it's at the end of the day, there's, there's some, a little bit of a fear, if you will, just setting in and all that kind of stuff because of the responsibility that comes with bringing on a team. But at the end of the day, I understand that in order for the business to grow and in order for, you know, one of the biggest things that I want to do is help other business owners grow their business. And in order for that to happen, I can't do that by myself. Yeah. That's one of the toughest things that I had in my transition over the last year and in our growth and hiring a team is if I want to focus on helping as many businesses as possible that are my ideal clients, one, I can't do this on my own. And two, I have to grow myself. So I can't just be focused on the growth of everyone we're working with. It's got to be a, it's got to be a partnership. Right. Um, so I, I love that that's the mindset that you have because you, you are a phenomenal human being first and foremost, where you do care and you do want to provide value and take care of people, which you do a phenomenal job of, um, which is awesome, man. But, uh, but yeah, man, I, I really appreciate you coming on any last tidbits, nuggets, anything that you want to leave with the audience to, uh, to help them in their entrepreneurial journey. Yeah, you know, so there's a guy, and you know him well. Uh, he's a he's a good friend of both of ours inside of Apex by the name of Clifton, and he shared something with me, you know, probably six, maybe eight months ago that stuck with me, and I want to I want to share it with your audience because actually, to be quite honest, it's helped me model my offer. And that's the fact that as a business owner, it is not our client or customer's job to remember us. It is our job as a business owner to make sure they never forget us. And so, and don't mind me, I did not come up with that quote. I, and Clifton may not have, he may have. And so I'm crediting him for that. But the thing is, is I've taken that and I've modeled a lot of what I offer in my business around that, right? And so that's why, where those touch points come into play. That's where the reviews and the referrals come into play. And so, you know, whether, and that's not, you know, a pitch, that's just simply, I want let I want to let people know that if they approach their business with that mentality, simply, you know, on social media, email, text message, like, heck, if you're going old school and going uh, with the radio and banners out on the highway, I mean, it make sure that people don't ever forget who you are. And at that, at that rate, you won't have a shortage of business. Dude, that's awesome. And you finished up the episode great right there. That's a great piece of information that I think, you know, resonates with anyone listening. And and I love how you talked about it could be regardless of what you're doing, marketing and advertising wise. You just want to make sure that people don't forget who you are, which is awesome. Man. Well, thanks again for, for hopping on today. We'll put all of your information in the show notes, but tell people, you know, where they can find you, where the easiest way to get a hold of you and to contact you about Timberland Marketing as well. Yeah, so the easiest way is simply just going to my personal website. I've got a whole digital card there. It's kylegreed.com, and that's G with Garrett. And so kylegreed.com and all of my links, you know, uh, you can text me directly from the, directly from that page and things like that. So yeah, that's, that's where my business is housed. Any courses that I have, it'll direct you where you want to go. Awesome, man. Well, thanks for stopping on today. And I want to thank you as the audience for tuning into this podcast. Please be sure to subscribe, download, and share our content. Leaving a five-star review goes a long way. And thank you again to Half Coast Studios. If you're in St. Louis and looking to start your own podcast or grow the one you currently have, 
then you seriously need to come check out what they have going on here. It's a phenomenal setup. I'm lucky to be here each and every week. See you next week. And remember, entrepreneurs are not born. They are brewed. I'm an entrepreneur. Entrepreneurs are born. They're brewed. Thank you for listening to Entrepreneur Podcast with your host, Adam McChesney. 